Welcome back. So we just have derived this, this nice interpretation of the singular value decomposition in terms of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of these correlation matrices, these column-wise and row-wise correlation matrices. And I told you in general, this is not actually how you want to compute the SVD. There's other more efficient ways of computing it, but this is a nice intuitive way to understand it. Now, that's not entirely true. There are occasionally times where you would actually use this to compute the SVD. Uh, for example, if your data matrix X is so very large that you can't actually compute it uh, or store it all in memory, okay? And so there's something called the method of snapshots. The method of snapshots. And this was invented in 1987 by Sirovich. Uh, in the field of fluid mechanics. So he introduced this method when this is fluid flow data that was so, so big that you couldn't actually store it in memory to compute a QR factorization. And interestingly, just aside, he introduced the method of snapshots in exactly the same year that he introduced his famous eigenfaces paper, where he showed that if these column vectors are human faces, you can use the SVD to build a basis of eigenfaces and then use that for classification and things like that. So this is a pretty amazing year uh, for, for data science. Sirovich introduced both the snapshot, uh, the method of snapshots, and showed that you could, uh, you could compute eigenfaces from, from data, okay? So again, I just wanna be very clear. In the vast majority of cases, I do not recommend you compute the SVD using correlation matrices. But in the rare occasion that this matrix is so big you can't load it in memory, here's what you can do. If you can't load all of X into memory, what you can do is load col two columns at a time. Let's say the first column, and you take its dot product with itself. Then you load the first column and the second column, you take its dot product, the first column and the third, and so on and so forth. So if you can load two vectors into memory, you can compute this correlation matrix, okay? It's very time consuming, it'll be very slow, but you could build this uh, by loading two vectors at a time and computing their inner products. And the resulting little m by m matrix is small enough that you can put it in memory and compute its eigen decomposition. So if the, if the data is so large, what you can do is you can compute x transpose x, element by element, two, call, two vectors at a time. You use that decomposition to get your v and your sigma hat, your v and your sigma hat matrix. And then you can solve for u hat using these. So if you assume that x equals u hat sigma hat v transpose, you can solve for u hat by inverting the v and then inverting the sigma hat. So this equals x times v times sigma hat inverse. Okay, And you can compute this, uh, this matrix u hat. Again, you can load just pieces of this matrix x at a time and compute this efficiently if this is really, 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 really big. And so that's the method of snapshots where you do compute this correlation matrix, the small little m by m. And the fact that it has the same eigenvalues as the big one allows you to approximate those left singular vectors, these really tall eigenmodes uh, using your original data matrix and then uh, these that you computed from your small uh, correlation matrix. Okay, again, not recommended. If you can get away with computing the SVD a different way using, for example, the QR factorization or randomized techniques that we'll talk about later, do that. But I wanted to show you this uh, method of snapshots for completeness. Okay, thank you.